Kicks 105.5 WKXH. Good morning, I'm JJ. It is Wednesday, September 21st at 7.47 and currently 55 degrees outside. I'll have your full weather forecast coming up in just a few minutes, but right now we are going to talk with Mike Barrett from the Barrett Insurance Agency. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Leaves are starting to change color. The temperature in the morning is a little cooler. Sign of things to come. Now, good. Uh, one night this week is going to get down to 33. Nice. Make my lawn start growing a little little slower. I'm okay with that. <laughs> you know, just, just kind of hit a little, little frost and say, pump the brakes there, lawn. Come on. So, be right. all right with that. Okay. So, and so what are we talking about this morning? So, for good policies this morning, I thought we would talk about what I, I often refer to as the bane of my existence. And there's a number of things on that list, but this is certainly one of the top ones. And it's called non-renewals. And just what is a non-renewal? Great question. A non-renewal is when a company, an insurance company, has found something about a risk that they insure that they don't want. Whether it just doesn't, no no longer meets their underwriting guidelines, or maybe for some reason they changed their underwriting guidelines, or maybe for some other reason it was put with them and never met the underwriting guidelines. All things that could exist, there's probably a number of other reasons too, but those are the most common. And a non-renewal is as follows. Let's say we're going to use January 1 as the example. So we wrote, uh, you have an insurance policy that's renews on January 1st, and here we are, what are we, uh, almost October, September. And let's say the insurance company inspected the house and found something that they didn't like. You now, maybe you had a roof that really desperately needs replacement or repair or um, deteriorating siding or missing siding or an unacceptable dog or a trampoline that they don't like. Some companies don't like those or a pool that doesn't have a fence. It's a long list. Um, they could then say, well, you know, we're just going to have to non-renew this because it doesn't meet our guidelines. So what that means is next January 1st, your anniversary date of your policy, rather than renewing, they're just going to non-renew, meaning your policy will expire at 12.01 a.m. on January 1st, 2023. And you will have to, before that, you'll want to make sure you find replacement insurance coverage. And in, uh, I believe, uh, Vermont and New Hampshire are the same. The minimum notification requirements for a non-renewal, I believe, is 45, maybe 60. I should have double-checked or had more coffee, uh, but either 45 to 60 days. So so you do get a fair amount of warning. Um, and as an agency, when we see non-renewals coming out, we, we try to stay ahead of it so that we can maybe even get notice out even earlier than that if, we're, if we get enough notice ourselves. Um, but it can be a, a, you know, it's not a fun situation to be in sometimes with non-renewals because, you know, that means you have to go back to the drawing board and find new insurance coverage. Or a new insurance company. Well, yeah, definitely a new insurance company. And, you know, the good news is, is that you know, as an independent agency for ourselves, and I could, pro- I could speak to many of the other agents in the area, we all have multiple companies. You know, so the good news there is if you're getting non-renewed with company A, well, I've got company B, C, D, E, and F to, I can go to. And, and see if there's a viable option there. But I'll tell you what my favorite thing is to do. My favorite thing is to get into the weeds and figure out, all right, company, what's your problem? Let's figure this out. What can we do to fix this? And if it's something simple, we fix it. You know, if it's just a matter of, hey, you know, this back section of your house is all peeling paint, paint it. You know, or the soffits of your, of your garage are rotting, replace it. Or, or you have a trampoline without a net, put on a net. Or you have a trampoline and we don't like them. Get rid of the trampoline. And if you do the things that have, have really caused this non-renewal to occur, if you, res- you, res- you can fix it. You can make the problem go away by addressing those concerns. And we can go back to the company and say, hey, look, company, no problem anymore. Here's why. And we can send photos and documentation and provide proof. And at that point, many companies will rescind a non-renewal because you've taken care of what their concerns were. This is why you need an agent by your side. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm speaking on homeowner policies, but non-renewals happen on all lines uh, for property and casualty. You're not going to see a non-renewal for life insurance because after the two-year contestability period, you're in. All right, You're not going to see it on health insurance unless it's a changing of the company. Um, but when it comes to property and casualty, and I'm speaking of home, auto, really any dwelling policy, business owner's policy, workers' compensation policies, umbrella policies, business auto, the list goes on. Uh, if there's a material issue that the company has that leads to some concerns of underwriting, like maybe you know, many companies don't support DUIs 
All right. So if you have a driving under the influence uh, charge, and even if you plead it down to a careless and negligent, which many people can do, uh, that's going to require, you know, what we call a financial responsibility filing. It's going to really muddy up the waters, and the company will say, look, we just don't support that. So we're going to have to non-renew you, and at your next renewal, you'll have to find a company that, that allows for those things. Say what they call the uh, SR-22? SR-22, Financial uh-huh. Responsibility Filing, which is nothing more than a, a document that gets sent to the state directly from the insurance company saying you have coverage and proving that you have coverage for three years with no lapse. And then the SR-22 poof, goes away. Now, SR-22 doesn't necessarily just insure your car, it insures your license. Yeah, so an is SR-22 is nothing. An SR-22 is literally a financial responsibility filing that if you have that responsibility filing on your policy, all it's saying is to the company, look, for uh, whatever you, you charge for this, which most companies charge between 25 to $35, they are literally sending absolute documentation to the state in which you have your SR-22 in, which could be Vermont, New Hampshire. I've had some in Alaska and Maine. Uh, it could be anywhere. And you just have to show that you have had no lapse in coverage because if you have a cancellation, they also get noticed at the state level. So, And then your SR-22 starts all over again. So that's all that is. But you speak of insuring a license. Yes, so there are times where people have to have a financial responsibility filing period of three years, but maybe they don't have a car. So they will get what we call a non-owner policy, which is literally just insuring them, their license of of sorts, proving to the state that they're maintaining insurance to comply with that three-year period. And if they get a vehicle within that three years, we can just change the policy and add a car. So it's pretty simple. So could they, with that uh, SR-22 insurance on their license, even if they don't have a car, could they use that to drive someone else's car? They can, but here's the catch, right? So you can't have uh, unfettered access to somebody else's car. So you can't have your friend John's car at your house that you're just driving all the time. Um, companies will get a little skittish with that. So, uh, or at least make sure your friend John has proper insurance on it because it's not, you know, because the vehicle has the insurance, not the driver, right? So when insurance follows the vehicle. So if you're driving, let's say you needed to borrow my car. Well, go ahead. Here's the keys. Go take it, to, you know, run your errands. If you got it in an accident, it would be my insurance that would handle all the claims and all the issues. And if my insurance was not deemed enough in terms of the limits, if they became exhausted, then your insurance would kick in next, which is very similar to what would happen if you have an SR-22, like you're only insuring your license. Boom. You know, insurance would follow the vehicle in which you're driving, and then your policy would, would kick in. But again, you know, if you're insuring your license, the primary thing is you're just getting liability coverage. Uh, for most people, they're doing it just to provide proof to the state they have insurance. Some people don't have cars but want umbrella policies, and they have to have an auto policy to have an umbrella. That's a whole different level of conversation that maybe I'll hold for another day because uh, okay. we'll need another <laughs> couple of minutes for that one. Um, but that's really the gist of it. So non-renewals, yeah, they're a pain in the butt. I hate them, um, but whenever I see them, I try to have a plan B, and if I don't have a plan B, I certainly want to make the client aware of the fact that there are things that need to be addressed and that they should be prepared to maybe seek other insurance. So that's the big point this morning. So non-renewables, I I, uh, did not even know that term. So uh, you just shed a bunch of light to me on that. Yeah, uh, like I said, it's, it's on the list of bane of existing items. Existence. Bane of existence. <laughs> I don't like it. Because when it happens, it's just uncomfortable because you have to have a conversation with somebody and say, look, the insurance company just doesn't like something about your risk here. And uh, I'm sorry about that, but we need to address it in some way, shape, or form, whether it be fix the issue they have or find a company that doesn't have any issues, which we can do both. So, hmm. Well, that's interesting to know. So if somebody wants to reach out to you and talk with you, say yeah. they have an issue with a non-renewable with their insurance yeah. company yeah and they want to talk with a different insurance company yeah. because they're it's going to end yeah they, if you're looking around and need to really kind of cast a large net uh certainly do so and you can always call us by calling 748-5224 visit us on portland street in st johnsbury online the barrett google facebook and youtube just look for barrett insurance agency all right and that's uh right on portland street in st johnsbury right, right by the bridge street, right off the bridge didn't they used to be an animal shelter or animal hospital? Animal hospital, hospital yeah. If you, uh, for those who knew it was an animal hospital, they think it's really cool that I still have the surgical lights up in my office. For those that did not know it was an animal hospital and they come in my office and see that I have surgical lights, they're a little weirded out. Um, but <laughs> I'm, I'm paying homage to Dr. Hoppy, So, All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I may not be a doctor or a surgeon, but I do operate in there. So anyway. Go ahead. And uh, we will talk with you again next week. Sounds good. Thanks so much for coming in. Have a great weekend. You too. Mike Barrett from the Barrett Insurance Agency right here in St. John's Barry on Kicks 105.5. Good morning.